Hello Internet! Um, I want to do a video on GitOps. So if you work with computer infrastructure, you'll eventually hear the term GitOps. It's a current practice that has its advocates, as well as a bunch of people who are less enthused about it, and there are nuances there. And so I want to talk you through it, uh, talk about reasons to do it, not to do it, and give my, my general thoughts on the topic. So on first, what is GitOps? And GitOps is the use of Git or some other version control system to hold configuration data for infrastructure. And I want to mention two different paradigms that people generally use, two, ex uh, two general extremes in terms of meaning, uh, although there's a lot of middle ground between them. So there's first GitOps as an SRE uh, practice, and this might be the more common use where SREs and other developers use Git tools, uh, making glue to config management languages and other systems to deliver most config changes across infrastructure through one or more repos that they directly work with. As an example, we're going to update changes to the network switches across our infrastructure by working inside a Git repo and then some, some periodic process or triggered process will notice changes to the repo, bundle them up, uh, possibly templatize them or otherwise uh, transform them into a real configuration and then deploy those changes to the switches through an API. So that's one meaning of GitOps. It's a pretty common meaning uh, and you'd have stuff like web servers, stuff like that. And so developers would uh, would propose changes through their normal code review process. Uh, if you if you actually use GitHub, then you could do it through pull requests. Uh, if you use other tools like Fabricator, you, you have uh, other options. But the idea here is that developers treat infrastructure changes the same way that they treat code changes. Then there's a second meaning that you'll uh, hear for GitOps, which are uh, which is when SREs use other tools to man manipulate configurations and infrastructure. And those changes, uh, they happen live, or they happen however those other tools work, but then they're occasionally automatically serialized and pushed into Git after the fact. To continue that example, in, in this uh, paradigm, we're going to update changes to the network switches by using the on-switch tools. So if, you, if you're using Cisco routers, you might log into the iOS uh, console and, uh, and do normal command line changes there. And a the regular process will then go and pull those config changes from the switch and push them into the repo automatically. Um, and generally, I'm going to be talking about the first, the, the GitOps as an SRE practice, rather than the GitOps as, a, um, as kind of a backup process. Um, because I think the, the advantages and critiques I have of GitOps most plainly apply to the first, whereas if you're just uh, grabbing, uh, grabbing stuff uh, automatically and backing it up to Git, there's, uh, that's generally pretty un unobjectionable. But in reality, these two versions of the GitOps paradigm, they're, they're not things that you have to commit entirely to one side or the other. You could very easily have a set of tools that this is the area of configs that's managed as an SRE practice. Then we have some other stuff over here that doesn't work so nicely that way. So it's just going to be backed up into Git. And, and a lot of people will, uh, and infrastructures will do that. They'll use a mix. Uh, so they're going to usually coexist to some degree in any sufficiently complex infrastructure, but one of these will be dominant. Why do people use GitOps? And again, uh, we're going to be focusing on the first, the GitOps as an SRE practice, things closer to that style of doing things. And one of these is peer review. Um, if you already have a peer review system, and again, Git doesn't get you these things intrinsically. Uh, you, you might have these things with GitHub, you might have these things with Fabricator, you might have these things with any number of other systems but there are a number of nice peer review systems out there where you have a repo and it's the centralized source of truth. Uh, and this is not just for infrastructure changes, it's for code in general. 
but you'll have that and then some people will want to make some changes so they bundle up things they they uh, do their work on a branch and then when they're ready they would like to have their branch merged into uh, into the master branch and so they'll use one of these peer review systems and people will haggle over the changes uh, they might ask for further changes before things get deployed into master but uh, so this is nice it's it's a pretty nice feature because it's not just each developer deciding hey I'm gonna do it it's not the only way you could do things though you could restrict uh, usage to a small set of uh, to a small set of users uh, who have direct access and then other people have to email patches and stuff like that but the, but a peer review process for infra infrastructure changes can be pretty nice um, it's not quite as important in certain ways as it is for uh, code changes, uh, but it really depends. Another argument for it is that uh, if all of these things are stored in Git, and this applies to both of the paradigms, then you have nice logs for config changes, and depending on how you set things up, if users actually provide nice commit messages, then you know the reasons for certain config changes. Uh, you also have usernames, so you have accountability for changes. You know who did something, you can go ask them, hey, why did you make a config change to this corner of infrastructure? And finally, and this is, uh, well, not finally, uh, as another point, you might have the ability to revert config changes. Now, this isn't guaranteed, particularly if you're making changes to both software systems and their configs, you might add a feature that breaks compatibility for old configs. Um, you might do an upgrade of, a, of an external software package that adds new keywords. And so you want to use those new, new keywords, but they're not legal in older versions of the software. So there are complications, but uh, generally for short windows of time, you might have the ability to revert config changes. Uh, and it becomes easy with, uh, with GitOps because you just change, uh, the, uh, you change the code in the repo it gets deployed and bam, you're, you're back where you were. Uh, assuming that that's all the relevant state for a change because again, you could be changing software versions, you could be modifying things that uh, rely on new, uh, new, that might rely on database changes or other external stuff. But barring externalities, reversions are easy. You also end up with a common API instead of concepts for a wide variety of different uh, software projects and infrastructure. And some of these concepts apply from, uh, from one company to another. So you get portable knowledge, which is generally a pretty nice thing. Uh, it's not always that important, but it, but it can be. And finally, you, if you want to use it, you get a pretty easy software di distribution mechanism if you have multiple instances of the same service. For example, if you have a bunch of uh, DNS servers running across your infrastructure, uh, if you want to, you can have, uh, if, you, if you make a change to their configuration using uh, GitOps methodology, then they might just directly pull from that Git repo to fetch the new config. So that's cool. Now, those are some reasons for doing GitOps. And they're they're pretty decent reasons. They're not uh, they're not they're not things that you really want to give up on entirely. If you don't do GitOps, you generally want to find other ways to to do those kinds of things, or at least think about them in terms of possibly compelling features that you might like to have. You also, f but you still face some big cho uh, choices in GitOps because again, these are broad methodologies. You always have to drill things down to specifics. Um, along the way when you're doing infrastructure and you have to retune specifics. So as an, exa uh, as, a, as an example of one big choice, you have to figure out for any configuration files or, or other systems configuration, how is it represented in GitOps? Do you have literal config files? Do you have an abstraction over them? For example, if you have a web server like Nginx, are you checking Nginx configs directly into your GitOps repo? Or do you just represent some kind of intent in there in some kind of intermediate language? The former is simpler and avoids inventing new types of complexity, 
but the latter might make migrations easier and can also make it much easier to see what a config change does. Because if, for example, you, you have fairly complex web servers, you might prefer most of the time to decide these are the only things that we're really likely to change in Nginx. And it's th these portions of a, of a config. So that's what's going to live in our GitOps repo, and then we'll have some kind of a templating language. Uh, it also might make it easier, what if I'd like to move from Nginx to Apache someday, or vice versa? If you have an intermediate language, you might not even need to change the configs. You might just change the, uh, the templating tool. So that can be a, a reason to go abstract. But there's also good reasons to go literal, and you can do this on a pretty pragmatic basis. It's not a long-term commitment. And you, you should also think and uh, do some, uh, some architecture around GitOps to decide how stable is your config paradigm? How important is it that you can grab configs from two weeks, two months, two years ago and still use them today? In some cases, it might be very important. And so you'll make a lot of other choices to make that possible. Um, in other cases, it, uh, you might be moving very quickly. You might expect to have a fairly, uh, a, a fairly high amount of change in your infrastructure. So you don't really need to have uh, the ability to jump back in time two years ago. You might decide that's historical. Maybe I'll look at the repo. I won't use it. Or maybe I'd even want to clear it out of the repo. So to sum up, Git or any other decent version control system provides a lot of uh, pretty desirable traits for managing infrastructure configs that someone uh, would need to spend a, a fair amount of effort to replicate without such a system. And all of these advantages come from decades of work in version control systems to solve their sort of related problems uh, in, in code bases and all the other things that people use version control systems for. So those are the reasons to use for uh, to use uh, GitOps. Um, here are some reasons that I offer for not using it as a guiding principle. Firstly, I prefer a more API-centric use of. Uh, I, I prefer using APIs more to change infrastructure. And uh, the reason for this is I like the idea of dynamic change. I like the idea of building systems that can respond to events by automatically changing configurations. Now you can do this with GitOps in that if you have an API uh, where you want to make a change, it could bundle it all up into a config management diff and push it for you, or it could just directly make the change and then do that kind of, we're going to do push a backup of the config changes uh, back into Git. But either way, I don't want there to be a disincentive uh, to, uh, to go heavy on APIs. And I, I believe that generally going heavy on APIs is more important than, uh, than getting all the benefits that GitOps gives you. It doesn't mean that I think those are insubstantial benefits, but just being dynamic in my view is much more important. Another reason not to do it is that uh, if you sign on to GitOps as a strong guiding principle, then you're going to ha have a lot of friction with data that can't fit in Git, or at least doesn't uh, fit well into Git. Things that don't serialize well, things that don't stably sort, things that don't diff well. Databases are nice, and GitOps should not be an excuse not to use databases. And my uh, and databases tend to fit well with APIs. Like if you have a, uh, a REST service, XML RPC, JSON based service, uh, then you might have a listener and the listener might be hooked up to Postgres. And you could use Postgres as a single source of truth for many corners of infrastructure. Uh, I prefer that design. Again, because I prefer having a more dynamic infrastructure. Uh, and you can also have uh, uh, the, the binary blobs, if you're developing your own software services, you don't want to take on, uh, you don't want to be disincentivized from, from changing those things because you're worried about all of those concerns that work well when 
all of your state is really well represented with Git. Um, there, there are a few other reasons. These are a little bit less convincing. Um, it's, it's hard to have the deep, deeper semantics of normal Git repos work well with GitOps. Stuff like releases, planning around big updates, um, forks, uh, stuff like that. Um, you, you have to adopt a, a specific methodologies to really make things work well with GitOps that take away a lot of the advantages of Git or, again, any other related tool that you might be considering. Um, and things like Git, they accumulate a lot of extra information over time that's often unneeded and will eventually slow you down. Uh, if you end up using uh, Git as a central source of truth, then eventually that repo will get very large, particularly if you stick a lot of stuff in there, binaries, uh, things like that. Uh, and that'll eventually make your clones, uh, cloning of the repos slow. It's possible that you can reduce this a bit by doing shallow clones with Git. But it's still a concern that you need to navigate. Um, so th those are reasons, really, to me, the most convincing reason is is that you want to be more dynamic. There, there are also issues with synchronizing things between repos, but some of these things get into another kind of related mistake in infrastructure, and that's uh, mono repos. Um, so I think I will probably save that for another video. I've also written about why mono repos are a bad idea in other places, so... Uh, I probably shouldn't cover that again uh, now. Um, now uh, but again, there are some things that you should learn from GitOps if you decide not to use it as a guiding principle. Uh, there are some things that you might want to do because you're aware of what GitOps gets you. And so for this, we're imagining that you're using an RPC-driven service instead. So some principles are keep logs of your changes make it possible to uh, traverse recent changes, design both for, that was a mistake, we should go back, because that's one common use for uh, the, the history side of GitOps, and something changed a month ago that broke a less used config and I need to understand it. And those aren't quite the same thing. Uh, the, the idea of being very close to a set of changes, moving carefully and then just doing a reversion, that's generally safe. Uh, you don't have a lot of complex gymnastics involved in figuring out what to do. But just trying to understand a past change, thats it's a pretty different set of tools. You'd even handle it differently with GitOps. You might do a Git bisect. You might be a, do a Git blame, something like that. Other things, you should allow and perhaps require commentary on config changes even in APIs when possible. If you're designing an API that will update um, configs across your infrastructure, give it a comment field and, and log those comments and show them. And also consider having a peer review system for potentially disruptive changes uh, and make automatic or small changes conceptually different from the human driven larger changes. Now, unfortunately, to do some of things, you uh, to do some of these things, you've reinvented a little bit of what version control systems give you, but you ho hopefully haven't signed on to all of the baggage there. And you could probably write a pretty nice library that would handle this uh, this kind of thing, uh, an RPC framework with history and deployment that's still API driven, um, and that's what I would recommend doing. Now, all this said, there are some cases where GitOps is a reasonable choice. If you have a small company and you really need those advantages that GitOps gives you, but you don't yet have, an, have a large enough team to do better, and if your existing tools don't disqualify you from GitOps, then, can, then in that case, maybe you should use GitOps. But even then, you should learn from and consider using it as a set of insightful ideas that you borrow a lot from, rather than make a full and permanent commitment to GitOps ideas. You should plan at some point to move away from a heavy GitOps commitment to more of an API-driven uh, infrastructure commitment. Uh, the other thing is, if, you, if the alternative to GitOps, which 
hooks into the above critique. If right now where you are is that you have static configs that live somewhere undocumented, that change whenever some SRE feels like it, that are manually deployed, that have no history, then in that case, for now, you should do a limited form of GitOps just as a step up from where you are now, um, because that's a terrible place to be. But if, if you are in that position, what I re would recommend is instead of subscribing to the full GitOps methodology and mentality, subscribe to the config management uh, um, mentality. Uh, just adopt something like Chef or Puppet, and that'll get you most of the way there. And usually people will keep their Chef and Puppet repos inside of Git. Uh, so hop on the con config management bandwagon, uh, but even then be pragmatic with those tools because it's still possible and mistaken to buy entirely into their methodologies, and those will also cost you a lot. But, uh, but in general, as you're maturing your infrastructure, you might move through transitional forms that are not, uh, that don't bear a, a resemblance to where you'd like to be. And that's okay, uh, because usually you have to keep the ship afloat and you have to keep on with the civilizing uh, mission of making your infrastructure more reliable, more automatable, more understandable, and to free up time to keep on improving it. Uh, and eventually, yeah, I, I would argue you should always, in the end, be aiming for that kind of API-driven, database-backed world. Uh, but you don't have to get there immediately. Anyhow, those are my thoughts on GitOps. Um, I'm happy to talk about it further in the comments. Uh, I'm happy to talk about other topics if people are interested. Um, but I, I haven't made a video in a while, and I thought that this, this is something that's been on my mind because occasionally I've talked with people about what I like and what I don't like about GitOps, and it's nice to have something to point to. Anyhow, uh, have a good day, and bye-bye.